Hi guys, welcome back to another online lecture for Organic Chemistry 2. And today we're going to continue our alcohol series. And we're going to start breaking into alcohol synthesis. So, synthesis should be somewhat familiar, especially to anybody who has taken Organic Chemistry 1 or has gone through a lot of those videos or that course. And in Organic Chemistry 1, we've learned uh, how to do synthesis with alkenes, which are double bonds, alkynes, which are triple bonds, alkyl halides, uh, some of the substitution reactions, so on and so forth. So today we're going to take a look at the synthesis uh, involved in alcohols. And this will be broken up over several different lectures. The way I want to group them, the first few lectures are going to be how to create alcohols. The next set of lectures will be about protecting alcohols, using protecting groups so that we can protect alcohols against other reactions. And then finally, we will take a look at and wrap up with, if I have an alcohol, what type of synthetic techniques can that alcohol be submitted to in order to get new products? So this is going to be probably one of the shortest videos of the bunch because we are just going to review several different ways in which we can obtain alcohols because we've seen quite a number of them throughout uh, the first semester of organic chemistry or the previous videos if you're following along online. So number one, and this is a grouping of them, anytime we have an alkene, we can perform a hydration reaction. And I'm just going to write hydration up here. Okay, but to refresh your memory, there were several types. So the first type was acidic catalyzed hydration. The second one was oxymercuration. And so that was the one where we had the mercury ion. And with the mercury ion, we had sort of like a mercurium ion that was a three-membered ring. And then we had the substitution of the alcohol. And then number three, the one that was sort of the oddball out because of its uh, regiochemistry constraints was the borohydration. Okay, so the borohydration, just to remind you, used the BH3, and that was an anti Markovnikov addition when we used the BH3 along with the uh, H2O2, we had peroxide and some form of minus OH. Usually there was like THF as a solvent. So all of these would give an alcohol as the corresponding product when we finished with the alkene. All right, so to give you an example, if I were to pick one of these out, let's do the acid catalyzed. Very simple example. So if I have this compound right here, and I subjected it to H3O, which is the acid, right, H3O plus. This group right here, the double bond, the alkene, will reach over and take one of the hydrogens. Those electrons will go back to the oxygen, and then the hydrogen will go to the less substituted position because I want to create the carbocation in the more substituted position here. And if you have any trouble with these reactions, because we're not going to go over all of them in great detail here, I encourage you to go back and review lectures, uh, take a look at an old textbook, or go back and look at some old videos uh, regarding these reactions. So I have my carbocation intermediate. At that point, water can come in as a nucleophile to that carbocation. And so one of the lone pairs will come in, attack the carbocation, Remember that this does not become an alcohol immediately. We still have attached water, and so water comes in in this protonated form. We have the oxygen with the plus charge. And then because this is a catalyst, right, it's catalyzed, we're going to reform the acid at the end of the reaction. It should not be consumed in the reaction. That's part of the definition of a catalyst. So I'll get another water to come here, grab a hydrogen, and these electrons between the hydrogen and oxygen will go back to the oxygen and I end up with an alcohol, right? So I've used a double bond, an alkene, to create an alcohol. And I can use the oxymercuration method and I can also use the borohydration, hydroboration, whatever you want to call it, 
Um, all three of those are valid methods for hydration. So that's the first. The second also has to deal with alkenes, but it's a separate type of uh, reaction. It's a little more specialized. So I can use an alkene and I can get a diol. So remember a diol is an alcohol that is, well, basically it's two alcohols. So they're usually right next to one another when we do these types of synthetic techniques, but a double alcohol. Uh, and so to give you a general idea, if I had something that looked like this, that's supposed to be an alkene, a double bond there, that looks horrible. Let's fix that. Try to get a cleaner double bond. There we go. All right. So if I have this alkene, I subject it to some reagents, which we'll talk about in a second, and I end up with an alcohol here and an alcohol here. This would be a diol. So in this case, this would be a syn addition because they're both on the same side. If you look, they're both wedged, whereas the dashes here, if I drew those H's in, would be like that. So we learned two different sets of reagents. Number one, I can use OSO4, the osmium tetraoxide. And then along with that, um, so this would really be a separate step. So we can say there's another one slash two here, that big one out front that I'm circling here. This is the first of the two different possibilities for the synthesis. So osmium tetraoxide, and then in the second step, we could use some sodium thiosulfite. And if we couple this, we can end up getting a syn diol, just like we have over here. We can also get an antidiol. And an antidiol is obtained by first making an epoxide Epoxides utilize peroxy acids, which have the form R, some alkyl chain, CO3H. Okay, so that's the first step to make the epoxide. And just to give you a general idea, that looks like R, C, double bond O, 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 H. That's a peroxy acid. If you look at it, it's got sort of the peroxide formation instead of the carboxylic acid formation. But they're very similar in structure. So that'll form the epoxide, which is a three-membered ether ring. So epoxides look like this, okay, and that's another carbon coming off there. That would be an epoxide. And then for step two, I can send in a nucleophile, like a minus OH. That nucleophile will attack the epoxide and break it open. It's going to come in anti to where the epoxide is located. And so I can utilize this, any type of a nucleophilic OH, so sodium hydroxide, something along those lines. And I can get an anti-diol formation. Now, that's actually just one of many different nucleophiles you could send into an epoxide ring. Uh, and we will talk about that more in the ether chapter, but not the alcohol chapter. So diols, we can form diols, which are basically double alcohols using alkenes. And then the third method that we really studied in a bit of detail in Organic 1 is substitution reactions. So when I use Rx, where X is going to be some sort of a leaving group, okay, particularly it's likely to be chlorine, bromine, iodine, or it could be a tosylate. It doesn't have to be a halogen. And then I am going to have minus OH, again, in the form of some nucleophile. Uh, this should really be an aprotic solvent, and if you're confused as to what we're talking about, again, I suggest you go back and you look at the SN2 lectures, okay, so an aprotic solvent, and I can end up with ROH for this alcohol. Now, it should be noted that R, in this case, should be primary or methyl, and the reason for that is if R is secondary or if R is tertiary, Okay, uh, then we're going to end up promoting elimination. We would favor an E2 reaction versus if it's primary or methyl, we're going to be favoring substitution, SN2 reactions. And so I can easily make primary alcohols and methyl alcohols, methanol would be the only methyl alcohol that we have there, uh, by using SN2 type of reactions where essentially it's all a concerted step. I'm going to have my leaving group leave, nucleophile comes in, and I'm done. I've got my alcohol. So those are the major ways that we've already discussed. This is basically a recap video of creating alcohols. 
There are two new ways that we're going to take a look at in this chapter. The first one we'll take a glance at is the Grignard reaction. We will learn the mechanism for that and so practice some synthesis. And then we are going to talk about a large class of reactions called reductions. Reductions also go with oxidations. It's a little bit different from what you're used to in general chemistry if you've never approached this in organic chemistry before. But we'll take a look at that when it's time. So next up will be the Grignard reactions, and I will see you guys for that lecture. Thanks for joining me.